Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and in today's On Shape speed run slash tutorial, we're gonna take a look at one of the challenges found here at TooTallToby.com in the Practice Models app. Now, in this app, you can see that we've got a library of over 100 challenges, going from a 2D drawing to a 3D model and trying to calculate the mass of that 3D model. We've got about 20 challenges in here that are free for anyone who signs up for a free account at TooTallToby.com, and then if you're really enjoying the app, you can sign up for the premium membership and get access to the entire library. But one of those challenges that's here in that group of free challenges is this third one here. So I'm going to click here where it says completed on this third one. I guess I've already done this challenge in the past, and it looks like my original time on this challenge was nine minutes and five seconds. Now, we can see here that there were a total of 667 people who have completed this challenge and come up with the correct mess. And amongst that group of people, the average time to solve this thing was 21 minutes and 22 seconds seconds. So this is a little bit of a tricky model and anyone who can get below that average time should be very impressed with themselves. This is not an easy model, but I think I can get down even faster than this 905. I'm going to try and get down to under six minutes for this challenge today. So let's get into it. Let's see how we do. If that sounds good to you and you're into some good old fashioned speed modeling, be sure to hit the like button on this video and be sure to leave me a comment down below if you learn any cool new tips and tricks from this video. So I'm I'm ready to try again here. I'm ready to get a faster time. So I'm going to click the try again button and I'm going to choose reveal drawing. And as soon as I press this, the clock is going to begin. So let me flip over to this overlay so you can see my keyboard. Let me move the drawing over to my second screen and let's get into it here in on shape. Create a new document. I'm going to call this 24-01-03 post cap. This is in the public space. So if you want to see this actual document, you can search for it in the public space. I'm going to start out with a new sketch here on the front plane. So S key begin a new sketch, press N to get normal to S key, jump into the rectangle command. And I'm going to create a rectangle here. That is, let's make this 25. So 50 for the OD by 55 for the total height. So that's kind of the main shape there. Now in this same sketch, I'm also going to create that internal pocket. So I'm going to create a line here from the origin that comes up to a height of 42. I'm going to kind of come over here towards the outside, single click. I'm going to, without clicking anything, I'm going to move my mouse back hold my mouse over that endpoint, and then come off with a tangent arc. And I'm gonna give that arc a radius value of, let's say four millimeters. That's the radius there on that corner. And then I'm gonna come down with a line that comes off tangent to that arc. So where's that tangency relationship? Let's see if we can find it. There it is, tangent. So we'll come off tangent to that arc. Where did it go? I lost it. There it is, tangent. And all the way down here, so it's horizontal to the origin. Single click, and there we go. Now I can just drag that line over. And looking for those automatic relationships can really save you a lot of time when you are creating CAD geometry. So now I'm going to create a dimension that goes from this vertical center line over here. That's going to be 42 over 2, or 21. And I'm going to create an angle dimension here for the draft, and that draft is going to be at three degrees. So this is what your first sketch should look like. If you're following along with using this as a tutorial, that's what your first sketch should look like. So now I'm going to choose the revolve command and on shape will pick the entire sketch. So I'm going to press the space bar to clear my selections and then just choose this region. And then for my revolve axis, I'm going to choose this line here. And there we go. That is our first shape. That's looking pretty darn good. So now I'm going to hit the green check mark and go on to my second feature. And my second feature is going to be a fillet. Now the drawing is calling this out as an elliptical fillet. If I choose this edge here, that's just a regular arc or a circular fillet. But the thing is, when you're working in on shape, you can see that there's a check mark here that says asymmetric. And if I choose that check mark, guess what? We end up with an ellipse. So it's kind of cool. You can create elliptical fillets right in on shape just by choosing this asymmetric option, a great time saver. So I'm going to say that I'm going to make this a distance of eight in direction one and 20 in direction two. If those directions are going the wrong way, there's this little flip direction button here, flip asymmetric. And there we go. There is our fillet running across the top of that model. So this thing's really coming together quickly. Now, for my next sketch, I'm going to be creating the sweep path for that little nub that's sticking out the side. It's kind of like a handle that's sticking out the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose here on the front plane. I'm going to right mouse button, make a new sketch. Actually, you know what? Let me cancel that sketch. Before I make this new sketch, I'm going to show this sketch one. And I'm also going to right mouse button on the sketch one and choose edit sketch appearance. And then I'm going to choose to make this red. And that way I can really easily reference this sketch when I'm making the 
the sweet path. So now I'll go to the front plane, right mouse button, new sketch, get normal two with the N key, S key, jump into the arc command. And I'm gonna create an arc here that goes from this point to this point. So I'm making that arc coincident to that inner wall from that earlier revolve. And now let's throw a quick dimension on here. Let's make a dimension from the center over to the peak of that arc, and we'll make that dimension 34. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a point command. So here's the, the point command in on shape. And when you're creating these points, you can pick up coincident and coincident, both coincident in one single click. So coincident to both of those lines and coincident to both of those lines, kind of like an intersection of those two lines. And so that sets me up really nicely to jump into the dimension command and create a dimension from the base here to this point at four millimeters and from this point to this point at 37 millimeters and look at that that sketch is nice and fully defined now now the one additional thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to choose the offset entities command click on that arc and i'm going to reverse the direction of that offset and set that offset to six millimeters representing the width of that ellipse let's left mouse button to finish that we can hit escape and this is what your second sketch should look like so if you're following along with as kind of a tutorial make sure your second sketch looks like that and when you're done you could you could rename that sketch i mean this is going to be your um, this is going to be your sweep path, so you could rename that sketch if you wanted to make that a little easier. Hit the green check mark, and we are done with that sketch. And so now we need to create a profile plane for our profile sketch, and the easiest way to do that is just to pick this arc, pick this end point of the arc, and then choose the plane command. And so you see here that on shape goes in and gives us a curve point plane or a curve, uh, a plane which is perpendicular to the curve at that end point. That's exactly what we want from a profile plane. So that's gonna be, I'll do shift N here, profile plane. And then on that profile plane, we're gonna begin a sketch. So right mouse button, new sketch. And what are we gonna sketch? We're gonna sketch the elliptical profile. So here underneath your circle command, you've got ellipse, the elliptical profile for that sweep. Now, one thing I like to do here is use the point command again. And I like to take this point command and just drop it here at the quadrant location and drop it here at the quadrant location. It just makes it a little bit easier to have those explicit points when you're doing things like the Pierce constraint, which is what we're gonna do next. So I'll hit a Escape here, I'll pick on this point. It's nice and easy to pick because it's explicit. I'll pick on this curve and then I will choose Pierce. So wherever that curve is passing through the sketch plane, I get that relationship. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, this point, this curve, Pierce, and then a dimension here, just click anywhere on the ellipse for the width of the ellipse at 12. And that is going to be our profile profile and so we hit the green check mark and then you can click on that profile in the tree to pre-select it and then you can choose sweep and then all you need to do is click down here for the sweep path and click this arc and look at that there is that little curved shape sweeping along the outside so we're going to hit the green check mark here and we're going to roll this view around and once we roll this view around here we're going to choose our old friend delete face one of my favorite commands in on shape delete face and we're going to choose to delete this face this face we're using delete and heal notice that that heal option is enabled here heal delete and heal this face and this face and there we go on shapes able to clean up that model we hit the green check mark and now we can choose p to hide our planes or shift p to hide all of our construction geometry including those sketches and the origin we can right mouse button on the name of the part down here say edit appearance make it an appearance that kind of matches the customer's colors and then we can right mouse button down here and say assign material and when this is going to come from the toby custom materials library and that material is going to be plain carbon steel we hit the green check mark and then all the way down here in the corner it's kind of hidden under the clock right now we've got this mass properties button so we choose that mass properties choose this body and the correct mass or hopefully the correct mass is 416.9 let's type that in over here 416.9 and enter and look at this it says congratulations this answer is correct but you already knew that because you've taken this challenge before. Uh, 416.9 was correct. It looks like our previous time was nine minutes and five seconds. Our new time is seven minutes and 20 seconds. Pretty good, pretty good. I think I could probably go a little bit faster, maybe get that down in that six minute range, but I'm happy that I'm improving here. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna keep that time. I'm gonna click submit and it says, are you sure you're gonna lose your old time? That's okay, I'm okay with losing that old time. So I'm gonna say, okay and Boom, there we go. 
We have now completed this model or completed it again, and now our time has been moved down here to seven minutes and 20 seconds. So wow, some of these users are really flying through this model. It looks like everything under four minutes and 43 seconds is considered in the top fifth percentile, top 5%. So if you're able to get down into that time zone, you are absolutely cruising and congratulations. But overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial speed run. If you did, be sure to leave me a like, be sure to leave me a comment down below. And of course, be sure to try out the Practice Models app over at 2 It's a lot of fun, no matter what 3D CAD system you're using. 